Okay, so um, I want to talk about Gauss's Law and Non-Uniform Spherical Charge just Distributions Parts 2. Okay, so let's see how um, you would use what we learned in the last video for Gauss's Law to find electric fields in there. So here is a, here is a sphere, and the charge is not uniform. The charge is, is um, as you go out, it gets greater and greater and greater. Now, I'm not going to shade this in because we need this picture to be fairly easy to, to decipher. And so um, it's a radius R, and you should just keep in mind that as you go out, the, the, the charge density gets greater and greater until you get to zero. Okay. Now, if I wanted to know the electric field, say right here, somewhere inside here, at a distance R away, lowercase r, uh, this is what you do. You draw a Gaussian surface. That's spherical. And um, you find all the charge enclosed in there. Okay. Now, um, you have to use the shell method to find that charge. Now, I'm going to call this, this um, R, I'm going to call it RG for R Gauss. That's the, that's the radius of the Gaussian surface. Because um, I, I have to put one more set of spheres in here that are going to represent a shell. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but this is a shell right here. Can you see that? That's a shell, a spherical shell. Whoa. And that spherical shell um, has charge embedded in it. And it's imaginary, but that's what I'm, that's where, what I'm going to do. I'm going to find all the charge in that spherical shell, and I'm going to add them up with an integral, but I'm going to tell the integral not to go all the way to capital R. I only want to know the charge that's enclosed here. So that's, I'm going to tell the integral to go from zero to R sub G. Okay, so, um, this is the this is the tough part here. The tough part is getting the charge enclosed. So the charge enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to e dot dA. Gauss's law, the closed integral of e dot dA. Okay. Well, the charge enclosed is gonna be. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum that up using, it's going to be rho dV. So it's going to be rho, that's rho, times dV. Now dV is the volume of that shell. So the volume of the shell is going to be 4 pi r squared dr. So that's, I'm going to put that all over epsilon naught. Okay, so this whole mess right here, that's getting me the charge enclosed by the Gaussian sphere. This R is goes all the way to here. That's R. And same with that R. This tells me the density there. And I'm going to tell the integral to start at 0 and go to R sub G. This side is going to go... Okay, let's let's let me give you the arguments for why the flux here. See, this is this is dA of the Gaussian surface, and it turns out that the E right there is also radially out, and that's because of a cancellation effect. The charge on the outside in this for a sphere, the charge on the outside, they all cancel out. So if I put a positive test charge there all this charge would cancel with the other outside charge. And the only charge that would be pushing on it then is this stuff, the charge on the inside, which means that it would be pushed really out. So E is in the same direction as dA at every point, And E is uniform at every point on here. So that is going to be equal to um, E times, if I pull the e out of the integral, if I add up all the da's, it's just going to be 4 pi times r squared. That's the surface area of a sphere. It's just going to be the surface area of that sphere, rg squared. 
Okay, so um, that's the physics. Let's do the math. The math, I still have to do this integral. Okay, so I'll pull out all the constants out in front of this thing. So it's going to be uh, b. I'll pull a 4, a pi, and a b out. And I'm left with the integral from 0 to r sub g of, um, of r cubed dr. And we got to put that all over epsilon naught. And that's equal to e times 4 pi r sub g squared. Okay, solving for this integral, I got 4 pi b. And when I solve for that, I get 1 fourth r to the fourth from 0 to r sub g. You see how that's getting me the charge that's enclosed by the whole Gaussian surface? All right, and so I'm all over epsilon naught. And that's equal to e times 4 pi r squared, r sub g squared. Okay, moving right along to the next part. Um, all right, so um, let's substitute in for this. I guess we can get rid of the 4s. And we can get rid of the pies. And um, so what I have here is B. If I put in the R sub G, that's going to turn into R sub G to the fourth. If I put in zero, when I subtract the zero, that term will be will disappear. So it's just B times R sub G to the fourth power. All over 4 epsilon naught R sub G squared. Let's get rid of one of those R sub G. So the electric field is going to be B R sub G squared all over 4 epsilon naught. And there you have it. So as you go out, what happens to the field? As you go out, at least to R, apparently it looks like this. This is a constant. That's a constant, and that's a constant, so it's proportional to r squared, so it's going to look something like this. Okay. Uh, what about if you're outside of the sphere? Out here, what would the electric field look like there? Well, it's straight out, but the value of it, to get the value of it, I'm just going to do, I'm going to dot this, and find the total flux through there both ways. So that's that's how you do a Gauss a Gauss's law problem. You find the electric field both ways. And so let's do that. Um, or the the electric flux both ways. And so that's going to be Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to E dot dA. Well, the dot product, E and DA, are going to be in the same direction on here. D the DA will be this way. And so will E. And um, E will be the same at all points on this Gaussian surface. So uh, this is going to turn right into E times 4 pi R squared, where R is the, the radius of the Gaussian surface. Okay, to get the other side, I'm going to do the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. So the charge enclosed is going to be the sum of all the charges, uh, beta r, that's the charge density, times the, the volume of each sphere, 4 pi r squared dr. That's the little volume. It needs a thickness, right? And um, I'm summing them up. So this is, gives me the charge in every sphere. And I'm going to tell it to start at zero, but you must stop at capital R. Don't go all the way to R. You'll be over counting. The integral needs to know that when it gets to capital R, it should stop adding them up. And so that's how you do that. This is the actually the answer. This answer was in the, the, the last video. All right. Thank you for your time. Bye.